So we're going to talk about urinary incontinence now. There are three types of urinary incontinence that you need to be able to differentiate. First type is stress incontinence. What does that mean? That means that you have, first of all, incontinence is leakage of urine. It's involuntary leakage of urine. Okay. Stress incontinence means that this leakage occurs when you stress the body, when you have any stress that increases intra-abdominal pressure. Okay. And the etiology here is the weakening, weakening of the urinary continence mechanism. So this is normal on the left. This is our continence mechanism. We have, first of all, there's an internal urethral sphincter. I'm not drawing them. This is the external urethral sphincter. And the whole mechanism here is there's the sphincter and there's these pelvic floor muscles right here that help squeeze that sphincter. So it, it like bolsters it, okay? And what happens is normally when you increase abdominal pressure, this is, this is the pressure, abdominal pressure here. This increased abdominal pressure actually helps support your external urethral sphincter. It acts more as a bolster, okay? This, all this pressure all squeezes, and you have a really nice sphincter. However, if you have weakening of this urethral um, continence mechanism, and mainly that's from weakened pelvic floor muscles, what happens is when you increase abdominal pressure, this pressure goes down and it pushes the bladder down, okay? Because this is too weak to bolster it. So you, so you get this, it goes down, and this is called urethral hypermobility. That's what it means. Urethral hypermobility means your urethra is moving, so originally it was here, and now your external urethral sphincter is here. And now there's no bolster here. So it's not con it's not a good blockage of urine. So that's why you get leak leakage. So stress incontinence is leakage brought on by any stress that causes intra abdominal pressure. And that's because the patient has a weakening of their urethral continence mechanism. And that's due to weakened pelvic floor muscles. Now, any stress, what, what do I mean by that? Stressing includes things like coughing, things like sneezing, things like jumping. All that can increase, increase your abdominal pressure. Okay, how do we treat this? Number one, you can treat this by increasing your pelvic floor muscles. You can strengthen them with Kegel exercises, pelvic floor physical therapy. Number two, weight loss. Weight loss decreases that intra-abdominal pressure. And finally, you can give them a pessary. Pessary is just an object that you put in here, and it's it's not a great, it actually doesn't work very well, but it's you can get tested on it. So it just basically adds more bolstering. You put it into the vagina, and it bolsters your, your it's not even the vagina. It's not anatomically correct, but you put it in the vagina, and it bolsters this, this pelvic floor right here, and it prevents this urethral hypermobility. Okay. That's stress incontinence. Number two, urge incontinence. What does that mean? Just no, look at the name. So this is leakage of, ur of urine, and then you, it's associated with sudden urges to pee. And physio physiologically, why would you have a sudden urge to pee? It's because your the trusher muscles in the bladder are, are contracting too much. Okay, That's what causes your urine to go out. So if you have a detrusor muscle overactivity, you're going to get this sudden urge to pee, and then you're going to get leakage. You can't control it. So you can have this overactivity from either two things, either a bladder abnormality, something like even like a urinary tract infection can cause irritation and cause overactivity, or you can have neurologic dysfunction, okay? Because the, the brain usually is responsible for inhibiting this detrusor muscle until you need to pee, until your bladder is full. But if you're in neurologic dysfunction, you remove this inhibition, the detrusor muscles get too active. Now, the way this looks like is, again, the patient feels a sudden urge to, to void, and then they're not going to be able to control themselves, and then the bladder just, just contracts, and urine goes out, and then you have leakage. So how do you treat this? One, you give them Kegel exercises. Again, that just strengthens the pelvic floor, helps your mechanism a little bit more, so even if you contract the bladder, maybe your, your sphincter can hold it in. There's bladder training that you can do, which is kind of just, just changes the the... Like time voiding, and this basically the urination has a lot of neural mediation. So if you can, you can kind of train yourself to not have to pee as much. That's what it is. Okay, you time you something like timed void, so you have to force yourself to pee every two hours, something like that. And finally, anti muscarinics. Anti muscarinics help act and block this detrusor act muscle. It slows it down, and so you don't have as much overactivity. So that is urgent incontinence. Finally, we have overflow incontinence. What is that? Look at the name. Your bladder fills up too much. 
And then what happens if it, if it fills up too much, then it's going to overflow. It's like a cup. You fill it up too much, it's going to overflow, and it's going to come out the urethra. Why would a bladder overflow? That's the main question. There's two possibilities again. Either the bladder has poor detrusor activity, so it doesn't squeeze, or there's an obstruction in this here, so it's harder for urine to get out. Both of these can cause the bladder, as you can see, to overflow. It's going to fill up to its capacity, and then eventually it can't, can't fill up anymore, so it has to, the urine has to go out somewhere, so it's going to leak out. And the way it leaks out is basically like a constant dribbling, constant involuntary dribbling of urine. And then these patients, sometimes they're going to feel like they didn't empty completely when they pee, which obviously they're not because that's why they have overflow incontinence. Okay? Because then why, did, why are they not emptying? Either there's the, the bladder muscle not working or there's an obstruction preventing emptying. How do you treat this? You put in a catheter through the urethra into the bladder. You basically have a tube. Now you, have a, now you allow urine to drain easily out. And if there's an obstruction, you can relieve the obstruction. So one of the most common causes of this of this obstruction is BPH. Remember the benign prostatic hypertrophy. So you have the hype. I have the prostate out here surrounding the urethra, and if it gets too big, it can block that urethra and cause obstruction. So that's urinary incontinence. The name tells you so much about it. Stress incontinence is from weakening of that pelvic floor, weakening of the continence mechanism, urge incontinence from that detrusor muscle activity, and overflow incontinence from bladder overflowing. Okay, so that's it for urinary incontinence.